Many years ago, I used to work in one of the offices at the White Building. The office was on the 21st floor, so it had beautiful views of the Singapore landscape and architecture. And, and when the sun sets on the Singapore River, it was just majestic. Unfortunately, I enjoyed none of them because I was too busy working. Singapore, being one of the most expensive cities in the world, is certainly not an easy place to retire in. In today's video, we are going to explore the possibilities of an early retirement in Singapore. I think it's fair to say that for a foreigner who has not lived or worked in Singapore before, it's a huge stretch to be able to retire here in Singapore. So today, for my fellow Singaporeans and PRs, how much do you think it costs for you to retire early in Singapore? Stay tuned to find out. Hi everyone, I'm Fran and he's John and we are the Corporate Breakout Couple. If you are new to the channel, John is Singaporean, I'm a Malaysian Singapore PR and we retired in 2020 in Singapore. We are so blessed to be able to call both Penang and Singapore our homes. To all our subscribers, welcome back! And for everybody, please like and subscribe to our channel and to all our videos so that you don't miss a single one of them. As someone who has lived and worked in Singapore for the last 13 years, I freaking love Singapore. Why wouldn't I? You know, it's efficient, it's clean, and there's so many things to do in Singapore. So if I feel this way, I'm sure a lot of you guys feel this way too. I'm sure a lot of you love Singapore and you love living here. Okay, let's jump right in. For my fellow Singaporeans and PRs, I trust that you know the everyday prices in Singapore. If for some reason you are blur like Sotong and unfamiliar, do watch my cost of living in Singapore part one on basic needs and part two on wants. There's a fundamental difference between working and retiring early in Singapore. The difference lies in your spend, AKA your expenditure. When you are retired, you can afford to grab the best deals during off-peak periods. And with time on your hand, you can plan your daily commute and then travel with ease and also save on transport costs. You also have the luxury of time to cook regularly, eat healthier and therefore save on food costs. In today's video, I'm specifically going to zoom in on the top 3 expenses in a Singaporean PR's monthly budget, which are your transport, food and accommodation. Let's talk about the one thing that everybody worries about, your finances. If you're on top of your finances and you know your numbers at the tip of your fingertips, I truly believe that is a very important step towards early retirement. Out of the top three common expenses for Singaporeans and PRs, two of them, which is namely your transport, which is cars, and your accommodation, which are properties, contributes to the city's hefty price tag of being one of the most expensive cities in the world. Having said that, we cannot discount the prices of food either as they can be pretty expensive in our city. The top 3 expenses do sound expensive. And the common misconception is that you have to work till 65 before you can even consider retiring. Hmm, maybe not. Well, if you truly believe right now that you can retire early in Singapore, for example at the age of 40 or 45, and you stay convicted on your path and your goals, I believe that that is half the battle won. Let me share with you a secret. If you can handle your top 3 expenses beautifully, your transport, food and accommodation, you stand a great chance at retiring early. The important question is, what are you willing to sacrifice in order to prioritize early retirement? For example, are you willing to take down your lifestyle by a notch or two temporarily and work harder than usual in order to achieve your early retirement goal? Let's tackle the first category, transport. And I want to talk about private cars. We all know that COE in recent months actually has been shooting out sky high, about $100,000 just for the lowest category. And do you think one needs to have a car as part of their basic needs? On the other hand, Singapore's public transport system is so efficient and so convenient. Taking BMW, aka in case you don't know, bus, MRT and walk, only costs you $128 for a monthly unlimited pass. Imagine you have retired early in Singapore. All you need is $128 to take the public transport. Bus, MRT is unlimited or you can even walk. You don't need a private car. You don't need to take Grab or Gojek everywhere. And on the off chance that you need to take a midnight ride, it's okay because that's just a one-time expense. 
So let's talk about the second category, food. If you have known me for a while now, I love to eat and food is a very important part of my life. So I always ensure that I put high quality food into my mouth. As an early retiree, you'll have then the luxury of time to cook all you want at home with high quality ingredients. Now, cooking at home in Singapore with high quality ingredients isn't that expensive. Trust me, I know I came from Malaysia. It's very hard to eat clean and eat well in Malaysia as it's very expensive. But in Singapore, it's actually quite affordable. You can mix your diet in with hawker food. And as we all know, the Singapore government has taken pains to push down the hawker prices because they want to maintain an affordability level for everyone. As an ex-hawker myself, we understand and we know it's very painful for the hawkers to push the prices down and keep things affordable. So you guys are very lucky because hawker food in Singapore is still pretty affordable. So when you're early retired, you have all the time in the world to go and visit your favourite hawker and give them your support. Just by cooking at home with high quality ingredients and the occasional hawker food, you really save a lot in terms of your food costs. I know that because when I used to be at work, I spent a lot on my breakfast and lunches, dinners, team drinks and etc. and that stacks up. And with the money saved, you can allocate a portion for your friends when they call you out over the weekend for some cafe, restaurant food and you can do all that and enjoy yourself without breaking the bank. Let's talk about the third category, accommodation, which is properties. We Singaporeans and PR, we like to keep up with the latest news on whether it's public or private properties. We all know that in the last decade, prices have been escalating. In order to combat escalating prices, the Singapore government has introduced multiple cooling measures to keep the prices down. Like for example, the additional buyer stamp duty. I'm, I lost count already how many times they have raised the ABSD. So if you want to buy a second property for investment purposes, such that you can retire earlier, how can you do it? Because the prices are sky high and there's also the total debt servicing ratio, which means you have a smaller eligibility loan amount for your second property. So if you cannot afford a second property, then how? How to retire early like that? Well, when there's a will, there's a way. Let me share with you one secret hack, free of charge, just for you. How you can retire early with just one HDB flat. Before I start sharing, I would like to invite you to listen with an open mind and an open heart. If you're watching this, it means there's already a little desire inside you to maybe want to retire early. The purpose of this secret hack is to lower your accommodation expenses when you are early retired. And I'm going to simulate based on 10 years ago, which is 2013. The assumptions are it's a married couple, both 30 years old then. They both have an income, let's say for 10 years, of $6,000 for basic salary, $18,000 for their year-end bonus or AWS, which works out to be an annual salary of $90,000 per year. Before I continue, we're going to do a quick switch over to the CPF website to look at the CPF contribution for this salary. This is the CPF website for the simulation of the one half of a couple based on the contribution, the latest contribution based on 6,000 of basic salary and for the year-end performance bonus, 18,000 divided by 12, that's 1,005. Let's calculate how much the total CPF contribution will be. It works out to be $2,775 per month. Note that this is for OA, SA and safe combined. Okay, this is the married couple then. They purchase a four-room HDB either by BTO or resale. You can get a very nice resale unit or even a BTO that is pretty big that has three bedrooms. And this is the HDB loan that they take for based on a housing loan eligibility which works out to be 80% loan, 25 years and 2.6% per annum. And before I continue, let's take a look at the simple mortgage calculator on how much the loan will be per month for these 25 years. Here's the mortgage calculation for the 500,000 HDB. We're going to take an 80% loan, which is 400,000. And then we're going to use a 2.6% per annum for HDB loan at 25 years for the tenure. This works out to be $1,815 per month. And as I've worked out for you, $1,815 servicing with your CPF OA for your monthly mortgage. Here's an article from Seedly SG that shows you how much CPF an average Singaporean has. The number that I'm using for the purpose of this video is 35 to 40 age group. 
and I'm going to use 220,000. Note that this CPF is the total amount which includes your OA, your SA and your MediSafe. And for the 220,000 for total CPF, this is the split we're going to use from this article from Money Smart, which is up to 35 years old. I'm going to use 62% for OA, 16% for SA and round up 22% for MediSafe. 10 years later in the year 2023, congratulations, you're both early retired. And you're both 40 years old now, and as shown you earlier, the CPF for one person is 220,000. The combined CPF is 440,000. This is the split between OA, SA, and MediSafe. And note this number, the combined CPF OA is now 272,800. This is the two of you. And your HDB, which is now 10 years old, you're going to sell it. You're going to buy a new four-room HDB, maybe from the resale market, at half a million dollars. You do not inflate your lifestyle and you keep your HDB at five hundred thousand dollars this is the bank loan that you're going to take 80 percent loan you can still take 25 years at same interest rate 2.6 percent per annum and this works out to be your mortgage amount of one thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars and you're servicing with your cpf oa this slide is where the magic is going to happen the combined oa as shown you earlier two hundred seventy two thousand eight hundred your new four room hdb which is five hundred thousand these are the calculations for your down payment, 20% which you're going to service using a CPF OA, $100,000. Your legal and stamp fees, which can be paid by your OA as well, roughly around 2.5%, which works out to be $12,500. So the total CPF OA they're going to use to service this half a million dollar four-room HDB is $112,500. Your balance OA, you minus your $272,800 minus 112,500, that works out to be a balance of $160,000 and $300 and your money servicing as shown you earlier is 1815 and what this means is the number of years your CPF balance OA that you can use to service your mortgage loan is going to be 88 months which works out to be 7 years and 4 months and what that means is you do not need a single cash required to service your mortgage loan because your CPF OA can last you for 7 plus years. Well, if the numbers I've shown you earlier has started to excite you, I actually haven't come to my secret hack yet. So, what's important is you really need to know how you can not only lower your accommodation costs, but you also want to make your money work really hard for you. So, this is a house hacking technique that's very popular around the world. It is literally called house hacking. So what do you do? It's really simple. You rent out one to two of your bedrooms while you're staying in the four-room HDB. And you know, in today's market, and I don't think I need to show that to you, each room can rent out for at least $1,000 each. Of course, if you do the necessary beautifying and a bit of staging. Now, you still need to fulfill your five years MOP. So you, it's okay because you can still stay in it as your owner, right? And also as a property tax, you don't have to pay more because it's considered owner occupied so instead of drawing down monthly cash after you net off all the household expenses your utilities your conservancy your internet your property tax and your household items you will actually draw a net positive cash flow how wonderful is that are you ready for house hack number two after you are newly retired what you need to do for hack number two is to hold your house for the first five to seven years before you sell again. It fulfills two things. The first one is your MOP period, which you need to hold for a minimum of five years before you can sell your HDB. The second is you can use that period of time as you are newly retired to continue renting out your rooms so that you can have your additional sources of income. And the third is you and your spouse should have enough CPF OA to service this HDB for the five to seven years without you needing to come up with a single cash. So after you sell your HDB after the five to seven years, you can either consider to buy another HDB again or upgrade to the private property game. What that means is after you pay the down payment and the buyer stamp duty using your CPF OA, you and your spouse should have enough OA to last you for another cycle of five to seven years or even more because of the accrued interest. And I suggest you work with a really good real estate agent who can help you to maximize your profits when you buy and sell your house. And not only that, he can probably have contacts for you to get a fantastic bank rate to log in for long periods of time. For hack number one and hack number two, if you don't want to entertain the notion of having strangers in your house, 
what I can suggest is you find out other means of building sources of income that can then supplement the one to two thousand that you're getting for your house hacking. You know, we are very lucky as Singaporeans and PRs to be able to buy properties in Singapore that can hold its value because of the great job that the Singapore government has done. The economy is stable, which means the Sing dollars has stayed strong against other currencies as well. And that is a huge advantage. In this section, I'm going to present to you the numbers to show you that it's possible to retire early for a Singaporean or PR. I'm covering on basic needs only in the following categories, food, household groceries, transport, accommodation, and healthcare. For this budget build, I'm using a very similar template to my previous video, Cost of Living in Singapore Part 1, where I cover on basic needs. Please watch it if you haven't. So for this food category, 30 days, 15 days of eating out, and 15 days of eating in. So there will be additional 4 meals a month, which is going to neighborhood restaurants and heartland malls. For eating out at hawker stores mostly, it costs $20 per day for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and an additional kopi. And the total expense for the food category, 15 days of eating out, it works out to be $300, 15 days of eating at home with a cost savings of 25% versus eating out. That brings you the number of $225 and 4 meals a month of neighborhood restaurants or heartland malls, $25 times 4, 100 brings you to a total of $625 per month. For your household groceries, this includes your basic necessities for yourself and for the household, costing $60 per month for one half of a couple. For transport, it will cost $128 as mentioned earlier for unlimited bus and MRT rides. For accommodation, mortgage loan is already covered by your CPF, so no cost here. Property tax, household utilities, conservancy charges, internet, and your personal handphone as well, similar to cost of living in Singapore part one. This brings you to a total of $240. Healthcare, it will cost you $250. It's important to be covered even when you're early retired, including basic health insurance, life and critical illnesses, and hospitalization plan. So going to the doctors is no longer covered by your company because you have to cover your own, so you must cost it in four times to a doctor's visit a year, hopefully not, and two times to a, doc a dentist visit a year, $24 a month after you amortize the amount to per month. And the total expense for healthcare will be $274. Putting all the numbers together for this budget sensitive retiree, including all basic needs, food, groceries, transport, accommodation, including a four-room HDB whose mortgage is fully serviced by CPF and your medical, bringing to a total of $1,327 per month per person. Now that you look at it, it doesn't seem as high now, does it? Let's make it even more exciting. The number $1,327 is an expense. Now, let me show you the income from house hacking if you're willing to rent out one to two rooms. Assuming you rent out two rooms, $1,000 times two, you get an income of $2,000 per month. Your expenses, which you need to net off, including your conservancy is a sunken cost, your property tax is a sunken cost, your internet is a sunken cost. You need to pay a little bit more for utilities, $100, a little bit more for household necessities for your tenants, and another $100. Your net income, $2,000 minus 200 is 1,800 and that means each person will have a net income of 900 sing dollars per month and what does that represent if you're willing to rent out two of your rooms to bring in passive income it means that your net basic needs expenses that you need to cover now is only 427 sing dollars per month per person wow now, let me do some qualifications over here. This budget is purely based on basic needs and no wants. Of course, as human beings, we want to have wants, we want to eat better, we want to travel around, we want to buy a new iPhone. I understand, but do note that this is an important starting point in your early retired life where all your basic needs are met and this is the number that you need. In fact, you might not need five to seven years. It can be just a few short years before you go back to your old lifestyle. What you need to do is to focus with the, all the time you have right now to build your some sources of active income maybe and also continue honing your passive income skills such that you can have this enjoyable early retired life where you can time freedom to do whatever you want. You know life in itself is a game. Early retirement is also a game and with all games you need to know two things the rules 
and how to win at the game. And with all games, not every game may be suitable for everybody. If you feel that this game is not for you, that's perfectly okay, you don't have to play it. But if you're really, really sure that yes, this is the game that I want to play and I want to follow the rules and win it, you have to be ready to set aside your excuses. Excuses such as, I've got commitments like my kids, my, my aging parents and other big commitments. And that's okay, you can have your excuses, but you have to be willing to set those aside and focus on the game, which is to win. So yes, if you are parents with kids, there are bigger financial commitments. But it doesn't mean you cannot retire earlier than 65. The key is to be open to the possibilities of early retirement than shutting the door completely when you use your kids, unfortunately, as the excuse for not chasing your dreams. If you're watching this and you're in your 20s and 30s, fantastic! This is the perfect age for you to start planning your early retirement. And if you're in your 40s and 50s, no worries, all hope is not lost yet. So after all that we have shared in this video, do you think it's possible to retire early in Singapore? To us, we say yes! Of course, having said that, if you're not willing to do the work and make a change and get out of your comfort zone, then you can forget about retiring in Singapore, much less retiring early. Uh-oh, now you must be thinking, oh, I want to take action. I want to get out of my comfort zone. But how? Have no fear. Go ahead and watch our Ready Fire Aim video that we released a few videos ago and you'll understand how to get out of the three things that hold you back the most. Early retirement is a journey, not the end destination. Therefore, we too cannot cover early retirement in just a couple of videos. So continuing watching our videos, liking our videos, subscribing to our channel so that you don't miss any of the content that we put out in the future. Bye!